Ken Whiting with Paddle TV with another paddling tip. And in this video, we're going to talk about tandem paddling and specifically the top three things you need to know about tandem paddling to have a great time on the water. Tandem kayaks or double kayaks are such a, a great way for couples or adults and a child or even to take a, a dog, a, a furry friend out on the water. Um, I mean, there's a lot of advantages to them. T double kayaks are, they're wider than single kayaks, which means they're more stable. And in fact, a lot of tandem kayaks are ultra stable and confidence inspiring. On top of that, they're fast. Having two engines in a kayak means you can really motor along faster than oftentimes than single kayaks. And the third thing is that you can paddle as tandem alone. Uh, and so if the, the second person in the kayak is tired, lazy, <laughs> just doesn't want to paddle, whatever, uh, you can motor the thing with just one person. So you know, there's a lot of benefits, there's a lot of good things about tandem kayaks. Um, but we're going to talk about the top three tips that you need to know to get the most from your time on the water. Before I dive into it though, I need to send a quick note of thanks to the sponsor of this video and that's Wilderness Systems and the new uh, Targa 130 Tandem Kayak. Surprise, surprise. The uh, Targa 130 is the big sister to the Targa 100 that I tested and reviewed last year. I did a full review of this kayak and I'm gonna leave a link in the description box down to, below to the 130 tandem. I did a review while I tested it on a real paddling adventure with my wife and that doesn't happen very often. Her and I hopping in a tandem kayak together. We're usually best suited for single kayaks, but uh, it was a great test. Um, the Targa is a cool boat. The neat thing about it is it's super stable, but also the front sitting position actually turns and you can, you, so you can face each other and actually have a conversation and hang out and you're not just talking to the back of someone's head. Um, the, the stern position is even elevated a little, so you're looking over the top of the person in the bow. Anyway, you can see the full review down below. Now let's dive right into it, but before I give you the top three tips for tandem paddling, I'm going to give you a little pre-tip. <laughs> and that pre-tip is uh, tandem kayaks have often been called divorce boats. And that's for good reason, because you know paddling adventures can become heated debates on the water in tandem kayak, but that only really happens when people go in without really appreciating the reasons that the other person in the kayak are out there. Because people paddle for different reasons. We're all out there for slightly different reasons. Um, and so it's really important that you understand and appreciate the reason that the other person is on the water and adjust the paddling trip plans to accommodate that. For example, the trip I just went on with, uh, with Nicole, I like challenging myself, I like exploring, I like pushing myself a little bit and covering real distances. She likes challenging herself, but she also really likes just chilling out, relaxing on the water. And so if I had planned this hardcore journey where we're just going to be covering miles, she's gonna get tired, she's gonna get cranky, she's just not gonna be happy. Um, and so I came up with a paddling trip that I knew she would enjoy. And I accepted the fact that she's going to stop paddling and she's just going to be chilling out and enjoying <laughs> the surroundings and there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. The only time there's a problem is when I go in with unrealistic expectations for what this trip is going to be like. And it's the same with kids. You, you have to tailor the trip to both partners and change your expectations. They don't need to be divorce boats. They can be incredible incredible vehicles for getting on the water and having a wonderful experience, but you have to have the right expectations. All right, now the top three tips. Number one, the stronger paddler or the more active paddler should be in the stern of the kayak. And there's a couple of reasons for that. The biggest reason is 
If the person in the front stops paddling, the person in the stern can continue to paddle and control the kayak. You can keep making good headway just paddling in the stern, but if the person in the stern stops paddling, the person in the bow can't control the kayak. All they can do is paddle and you can end up doing circles. You just, you don't have control of the boat. So the, the, the stronger paddler, the more active paddler, the more person who's going to keep going and, and is going to be in control of the boat should be in the stern. Number two, paddle in unison. Now paddling in unison, it just looks better on the water for one thing, but more importantly, it's less frustrating because you're not going to be clashing paddles all the time. There's nothing worse than going for a stroke and then hitting a paddle and not getting a good stroke. It's just annoying. And so if you paddle in unison, you're going to be less frustrated, but also it's the most efficient way to move your kayak through the water. The other thing about paddling in unison is it's not the stern paddler, the strong paddler, that is setting the pace. It's the bow paddler that sets the pace. And the stern paddler then matches the bow paddler's pace. You know, sometimes your pace, your natural pace might be different. And so the stern paddler can say, hey, can you slow down your pace up front a bit? I'm having trouble matching it. Or, you know, it's often harder to ask someone to speed it up in the front, but you can try. Um, but paddling in unison makes a big difference. The third top tip for tandem paddling is to, well, the best way to turn a tandem kayak is by using sweep strokes or opposite sweep strokes on the opposite sides of the kayak. And what that means is the bow paddler is gonna use a forward sweep stroke on one side of the kayak, while the stern paddler, the paddler in, in the back, is gonna use a reverse sweep stroke on the other side of the kayak. This turns the kayak much, much more effectively than just both of you taking strokes on the same side of the kayak. Now what is a sweep stroke? Well, a sweep stroke is just a stroke where you hold the paddle nice and low and you're sweeping as wide an arc out to the side of the kayak as you can. So you're not propelling the boat forward or backward, you're turning the kayak as much as possible. Well, there you have it, the top three paddling tandem kayak tips. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I enjoyed doing the tandem paddling trip way more than I expected to. I think I'm going to add it to the, the plans more often than I have in the past. You know, sometimes it's great to be on single kayaks. For me, a lot of the time it is, but it was a really great experience being on the tandem kayak again, and I'm definitely going to be doing more of it. So. Uh, I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to Paddle TV if you haven't already and stay tuned for more paddling tips, paddling gear reviews, and paddling adventures. And don't forget to check out the full review of the Wilderness Systems Targa 130T. In, uh, I'm leaving a link in the description box down below.